Hello, I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel. And you've come along today just as I'm starting up Mild Melty Cheeses number 9, where we're looking at Goat Gouda. <laughs> so this is a Dutch cheese, a product of Holland, and it says aged 4 months on the front label here. So I haven't tasted this yet, but I'm going to open it up right now and we'll start in. So I think that'll give me excess enough. So if you like the videos that you've been seeing here on mild cheeses or honey or black licorice or any of the other things that we look at, please give this one a thumbs up. Leave comments and questions down below. Share it with friends. Subscribe to the channel and click on that bell to get notified when the new videos pop out. So now that it's open, I'm smelling a funkiness, a slight cheesiness and a little touch of goat. I'm familiar with goat milk and goat cheeses and this has just a little hint of that. Let's see if this label is going to come off easily. Look, it will. Okay, so I can peel back some and I'll just work with the piece here. Probably save some of the other for a sandwich or mac and cheese. I haven't really decided yet, but this has been out of the fridge for a couple hours so it's uh, at room temperature and we'll be tasting it that way to get uh, all the flavors we can. And this cheese is found in Liz Thorpe's book, it's the Book of Cheese, in her Havarti Gateway chapter where she uh, goes on about Gouda and Fontina and Asiago and goat and sheep milk are just part of the tools that cheesemakers have in Europe or wherever they are and she recommends arena goat gouda a young goat gouda which uh, i haven't found here i found this one beamster which is, says it's dutch and this is the one i'm using as uh, our example here so it's a little wet on the outside a little oily oil might be separating as it warms up to room temperature so let's give this a taste So at four months, it's a little crumbly and drier than most of the other young, melty, mild cheeses have been. So this probably isn't the youngest example that she's trying to show off in this chapter. It's got a definite touch of goat. Some people may find it objectionable, some people might just think it's another flavor. So it's not the smoothest of textures because of the age. It's drying out a little bit, getting a little more granular, grainy. So it's a good cheese. It's got lots of flavor for this group. It stands up to the cracker very well. It would be over on the more intense end of the uh, flavor spectrum. So I don't need a giant cracker like this. I'll just use half for my piece of goat gouda. And let's try it on this uh, buttery looking cracker. Well, the cracker's not very salty. The cheese is uh, modestly salty. I can't tell. So much flavors jump out, I know the cheese is salted, but it doesn't scream salt. So, let me go ahead and start pairing this with some of the things on this plate. I'm really curious. Oh, let me get a different shape or... Yeah. That'll work better. I want to try the strawberries. So there's a nice thick, thick-ish chunk. And I'm going to take one of these fat slices of strawberry and just put the two things together and see how it goes. Cheese is kind of crumbly and the pulver, it's easy to pulverize in your mouth. And the fruitiness and tartness both and juiciness of the strawberries, a huge contrast to all that. The cheese is drier than most of these soft young ones have been. 
And then the fruit flavors really pop. The tartness, the sweetness, all those are contrast to the to the cheese flavors and textures. And everything there is is a contrast. So that was good. Let me try some other cracker if it breaks right. Mm. Mm. Wow, it broke exactly the opposite of what I thought it would do. Uh, let's try another piece. Good sized piece of cheese. Let's do it with golden raisins. Which I think of as kind of a mild flavor, soft flavor. I'm just going to put a few on and put it all in. Hmm. It's a very dry gamish. The cracker is dry. The cheese is dry and crumbly, and the raisins don't have a, an abundance of moisture, let's say. So the flavors went well together, but it was not something you can uh, gracefully smile while you're trying to chew it up. So I think I'll do one more set here. And I just, oh, that's probably too much. The sun-dried tomatoes have strong flavors, often earthy and smoky, and that is probably enough to uh, go with that piece of goat cheese. Mmm. Okay, that works. The goat cheese has uh, strong flavors, and the earthiness, fruitiness, almost smokiness of the sun-dried tomatoes really complement that well. It goes along well. So I haven't decided if I'm doing a mac and cheese or a grilled cheese sandwich, but uh, I'm going to take this and do some melting exercise next and bring it back. Okay, I'm back with half of a grilled cheese made with this goat gouda. As I was uh, manipulating it and grilling it and melting it, I sure got the impression that it was older and more grainy in texture than most of the cheeses in this group are supposed to be. But we'll go ahead and taste it and uh, try to get a feel for the feel. So, of course, the bread smells wonderful. Oh, it's nice and melty. It's really liquid on the inside here. It's very white. A little bit of goatiness. And smoother than I was expecting it to be. For how grainy, granular, pasty the uh, texture of the neat cheese is at room temperature. Okay, so it melts. That'd be interesting in a mac and cheese. Okay, that works. I was all worried for nothing. So another successful cheese and one I haven't had before. And again, please remember to like this video, leave comments and questions, share with friends, subscribe and click the bell. We will keep stepping through all the mild melty cheeses we can find in our area. And uh, cheers.